Welcome back to this video lecture series on data structure and algorithms. So today our lesson is quick sort. So let's start. So quick sort is another sorting technique. So this technique also abides by the divide and rule algorithm just like merge sort. What it does it it picks up an element as pivot element and partitions the array with respect to it. We can choose to pick the pivot in different ways. There are mainly four ways in which we can do this. First way is we can choose the very first array element as the pivot element. Second way is choosing the last element of the array as the pivot element. Thirdly, we can choose any random array element as the pivot element. And lastly, we can choose the middle, the element at the middle as the pivot element. So for this uh, particular video lecture, we will be uh, obeying the convention of taking the last array element as the pivot element. So talking about the technique behind the quick sort, the whole of the sorting process is done by combining two different functions, which are obviously correlated. The first function is the recursive quick sort and the second one is partitioning. So let's have a look at the algorithm of this quick sort. So the first function is the recursive quick sort. This function takes three arguments. One is the array itself. Low stands for the lowest index of the array and high stands for the highest index of the array. So in this function, what we are going to do, we will be checking this condition, whether the value of low always remains lesser than the value of this high. If this condition persists, then the first task would be to first have the pivot element. We need to get the pivot index, the index at which the pivot element resides. For that, we will be using this partition function. We will be discussing about the algorithm of this partition function, which again takes three arguments, the array itself, the lowest index and the highest index. Next, we will be uh, having two recursion calls the first recursion call again the there will be three arguments obviously the array itself for one part the first or the second argument will be low but the last argument that is the highest index will be the element which is just previous to the pivot element and another recursion call will be done for the another part of the array as we can see, the pivot divides that in two parts. So in the previous uh, recursion call here, this is the left part of that array. And in the right part, what we are going to do is the lowest index will be the element next to the pivot. That is why we had uh, written this pivot plus one and the high will be remaining as like this. So now talking about the algorithm behind the partition function, which takes the array lowest index and the highest index. The very first thing we're going to do is that as we took the convention of uh, taking the last array element as the pivot element, we will be storing this last element at the pivot. Now we'll be taking two variables here, i and j. In i, we will be storing a value of low minus one, lowest index minus one. And we will run a loop, which will start from the zeroth index until the last element of the array. Now, if it is seen that at the current iteration, the current element is less or equals to the pivot element, then what we're going to do, we are going to increment this value of i by one, and we're going to swap these two array elements, array of i and array of j. So this whole process uh, will be repeated for all of the loop iterations. Now, after we get out of the loop, what you're going to do is the i plus one th index array element and the array element at the pivot position will be interchanged. There again, a swap function will be incurred. And lastly, the i plus one th index will be returned. So if we take the example of a diagram, we can explain how this partition thing works. So suppose this is the array at the beginning. So 
as we took the convention of taking the last element as the pivot we can definitely see that 70 is the pivot element now when we do the partition we can see low is 0 so i value will be minus 1 and the loop iteration starts from here so first j is 0 so array of j is 10 and array of pivot is 70 now as array of j is less than array of pivot so we will be incrementing the i and swap between array of i and array j so i will be 0 j is also 0 so there will be no swapping just like that so 10 will be right here when we increment the loop iterator j is 1 i is 0 and array of j, j is not less than array of pivot so j increments now when j is 2 i value is 0 and array of j is less than pivot so array of so i first will be incremented so array will have a value of 1 j is 2 so array of i and array of j will be interchanged so 30 will be placed here and 80 will be placed here so just like this if we proceed throughout this array what we, we will be seeing is that we will be having 70 at the suitable position of the array and all the elements having lesser values will be at the left hand side and the all the values that are you know having greater values than pivot element will be at the right hand side so we will be breaking up this two parts of this array as we saw the recursion calls so again when we have this uh, you know array part again we'll be taking this last element as pivot and again we will continue doing the partition things so this is the way the partition and the recursion calls work now before jumping on to the programming part this is a very important part that we must know that quick sort is preferred more over merge sort for sorting arrays thing with quick sort is uh, you know quick sort in its general form is an in place sort whereas merge sort requires extra big o of n storage where n is the array size now allocating and deallocating extra spaces for merge sort increases the running time complexity for the algorithm quick sort is also a cache friendly algorithm as it has a good locality of reference when used for arrays it is also tail recursive so tail call optimization is also done for the case of quick sort so uh, a lot of theory part related to quick sort it was now let's jump on to the programming part and let's see how we can implement the logic so uh, this is uh, the lines of codes i have already you know typed down i have taken this array for reference here it is and uh, i'll be needing this uh, size of the array the variable is n here and again i had used this print array function so i have also uh, written down the code of this print array so from now here what we're going to do is we'll be declaring the quick sort function so let's name it a quick sort and the arguments here will be the array the uh, lowest index that is 0 and the highest index that is n minus 1 now uh, before defining it again uh, what we're going to do is we will be printing out the sorted array so I'll be needing this function here before this I'll be needing a message uh, to deliver to the user that the sorted array is and then print array so now we will be this uh, defining this quick sort function so let me just copy it so here it is the return type will be void now the arguments so let's say again this will be an array of integer type this will be int l uh, you know l stands for the lowest index and this will be h for high now in here we'll first uh, keep on checking this condition if l is less than h so if this is the case what we are going to do first is we're going to uh, get the pivot index for that again we will be declaring a function here which will have a name of partition and again have three arguments the array the lowest index and the highest index now, after we get the pivot index 
we will again uh, have two recursion calls so the first recursion call this will be quick sort this will be array now as is the left part so the lowest index will be l but the highest index will be the element just before the pivot so it will have a value of pivot minus one then again another recursion call and the arguments will be the array now the lowest index will not be l it will be the element next to the pivot element so pivot plus one and lastly this will be h so uh, the last uh, and an important thing to do is define this partition function so for that again the return type is void and uh, here this will be an integer type array and this will be having an uh, you know int l and int h so now from here the very first thing is that uh, as per our conventions the last array element will be taken as the pivot element so i'll be defining here a pivot which will have the array of h now i'll be taking two variables i and j this i will be having a value of l minus 1 and a loop iterator so now i'll start uh, the loop definition so it will start from 0 and it will continue up till h minus 1 and then the value will be increased now inside the for loop uh, we have to check for a condition that if array of j is less than less than is equal to uh, array of you know pivot so or actually it's will not be array of pivot it will simply be the pivot because uh, again this pivot itself is an array element so whatever if this is the condition then what we're going to do is the first task is incrementing the i value by one and we will be swapping these two values so for this swap function i'll be uh, passing the address of these array elements so ampersand array of i and ampersand array of j so as i'll require require this swap function again so before going forward with this partition function i'll be defining this swap function so again uh, this swap function will return nothing so void arguments will be two pointers so in star a another will be in star b let's say so here i'll first take a temporary variable and let's store the you know star a here so now i can assign star a is equal to star b and lastly star b is equal to temp now again coming here now we will be getting out of the loop and again swap the uh, i plus oneth element so i plus oneth element and uh, the pivot actually so this is the thing and will actually uh, return the i plus one so one mistake has been done here and that is the return type of partition will not be void this will be int so right uh, let me just put a parenthesis over this right let's now run the program and see how it behaves so we have the output here as we could see that the initial array was 10 7 8 9 1 5 and after we had implemented the quick sort we can see the array has been sorted properly 1 5 7 8 9 10 so uh, this was the way we could implement the logic behind quick sort and execute it thank you for watching this video and staying with us see you next time